What's up fam? Thanks for tuning in once again or for the very first time. I'm Jasper the Filmy and this is my perspective on Sylvie's Love starring Teresa Thompson and Nandi Asamoga. All right, so here's your warning right now, like how I normally do in other reviews when I'm sharing my perspective on the story. If you have not seen the film, I would definitely encourage you to check out my non-spoiler review. If you wanna see that, the link to it is right up here. Check that out, see the movie, and come back to hear my perspective on this. You had your warning, now I'm about to spoil it. Okay, so I think the best thing I could say to start off with this review and my perspective of just the theme of this story is literally a cunning example of how messy love can get. If I was to rename this film from Sylvie's Love, I would just put the title would be How Messy Love Can Get because at the end of the day, we are seeing two individuals in this story really go through a lot of changes because of just how deep they are in love with each other. And I think the biggest thing that we could all take away from it is exactly the direction our lives can go into when we just don't simply follow the true passions and the true feelings of the ones that we love to the T. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality is you gotta be true to you. And Sylvie, I believe, really showed an example of how difficult it can be to be true to you. Name me a man or woman that has not been in that spot before where they really wanted to make the decision that really meant the most to them, but there was a lot of outside factors pretty much making that decision complicated. As we can see in the film, one of the earliest factors that really made a difference for Sylvie was her mom. Literally, her mom really had a very staunch approach towards how she wanted Sylvie to conduct herself. Also, also honestly, who she would marry. And seeing kind of the relationship that Sylvie had with her mom makes one wonder exactly how did that impact Sylvie's awareness to her own identity. I can't say for certain, but I can and say that in the story there was some subtle hints that we kind of saw about Sylvie that kind of lets us know subtly that Sylvie was a little bit immature and naive in some areas like if you go back to the scene where they're sitting in the basement and waiting to get out of it there was a portion where Robert uh, gave her a cigarette because she asked to try one probably not the best thing but I can kind of understand why that happened. Then there's a little portion where they're sitting on the rooftop, her and her friend, as well as Robert and Sylvie sitting uh, close to each other. There's a portion where uh, questions are being asked about, you know, what one would like to do as far as going swimming and whatnot. And then her friend quickly interjects, well, she's afraid of this and she doesn't like to get her hair wet and all this other stuff. There's also this part that honestly threw me for a loop. I'm going to be real with you guys. When they was leaving the party and they were standing out in the street and Robert was pretty much kind of question her, well, if you didn't care about me, then why you see me dancing with another woman offends you. And she actually comes out and tells him exactly how she felt, literally showing some vulnerability there. And I think I'm just gonna be honest with you, I did not expect that the first time I watched the film because in my mind, I was kind of thinking that she would kind of do something that that sometimes females can do and men can do it too sometimes we we when we get questioned you know about uh, something and how we feel we kind of play the strong arm or, or kind of play the game of oh no it didn't matter to me i didn't care but she didn't do that she literally opened up the reality to robert how she felt and then honestly robert opened up to her yeah well this is how i felt and there's something beautiful about that. They was both able to trust in a way to be vulnerable with each other. But I think part of some of that honest vulnerability came from a little bit of the youth that was exerted through her story. There's another portion inside of the film that kind of tells the telltale story that Sylvie really had never been in love before. And honestly, this kind of in a way is a synopsis breakdown of the whole entire film in that one question. It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Hey, that's Shakespeare, isn't it? I don't know. It's just something my mother used to say. 
Now she back in Detroit? No, she passed away a couple years back. Sorry to hear that. She's the reason I'm here, really. I always wanted to be a musician, you know? But after high school, reality set in and I took a job on the assembly line. And then when my mother passed, it made me realize that life's too short to waste time on things you don't absolutely love. So, quit the auto plant. Join the band, and the rest, as they say, is history. But how do you know? If you love something, absolutely, I mean. I don't know. I guess when it's the only thing that matters. That particular part of the film and honestly, the whole entire film could at least be a message to maybe those people out there that believe that love isn't enough to sustain a relationship. Yes, I, I do agree with the fact that there are the factors that kind of goes into play to, you know, have a healthy lifestyle within a relationship and obviously progress into positive things in the future. Yes, I agree to that. But one thing this story shows us is that if there's not any compatible love present, that love that is compatible amongst the both of them, there's not gonna be anything that's going to give them hope to pretty much help them get through those challenging times that will test the both of them. Because if you look at Sylvie and you look at Robert, literally in the end, they was faced with a ton of questions. They was faced with the question of how they was gonna make ends meet because he's working on the assembly line in Detroit and she's faced with the question on what she would do as far as her career and whatnot and, and also just how they are going to pretty much kind of move forward, you know, as people and then as a couple, you know, considering everything they had gone through in the time period. And honestly, in the end, the thing that they at least had hope in was the fact that they did love each other and they had each other. And that was the determining factor and honestly the fuel of motivation to inspire them to trust that they can move forward because they had each other and they had love. If you want to look at Sylvie's life when she made a different decision other than the decision that represented what she truly loved, she found herself literally at the point where she just said, I can't do this because I honestly do not love you the way you love me. Matter of fact, I just don't get it from you. And that's honestly a hard pill to swallow if you're on the other end, trust me it is. But you got to also understand the fact that she was kind of in a place where she come in to her own of her own identity, where she just really knew what she wanted for herself and what she wanted in life. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, we just like Sylvie need to come to the realization that we are the casting directors of our love story. And our love story is scripted in our heart, which gives us the authority to pretty much understand who we would like to play a role in our story. The truth is, not everyone can be casted into a role that fits with your love story. You've possibly been that man or woman before that was in a story that wasn't right for you or was in the situation where you tried to make the character fit into the role. And honestly, I'll leave you with this analogy. At the end of the day, not everybody makes the final cut through the auditions that helps the main character get to their happily ever after, like how we saw with Sylvie. The only thing that I, in a way, kind of fault her for was in a way letting her mind kind of get in the way of, honestly, what her heart was just naturally yearning for. I mean, this girl was in love with this boy back when he was playing the saxophone at the club. I mean, she was literally at that point hooked and connected with him. Now, one question that I have for you guys that I would love to hear your comments on in the box down there would be, from your understanding of the story, why do you believe the name of the film was Sylvie's Love and not Robert's Love? I was just kind of curious to hear what your guy, what your thoughts were on that. If you have an explanation or probably some intuition on why you think they decide to name it Sylvie's Love, then definitely put your comments down there. I would love to hear what you think about it. 
Nevertheless, aside from Sylvie and aside from Robert, another story that we should also pay close attention to is how the people around the both of them influenced their lives. Earlier I was talking about Sylvie's mom, but in the end we saw that Sylvie's best friend ultimately was the determining factor that helped Sylvie make the best decision for her life. And we also see even on Robert's side, the lines were a little bit blurred as far as who he was able to kind of go to when he needed that advice. He also mentioned to Sylvie how he lost his mom, you know, unfortunately. And something that I think could also be a communicating lesson to all of us is literally paying close attention to our circles and thinking about, you know, the people that we need around us in the times when we just simply need help in making decisions because we can't do it all on our own. We need help and we need to be able to go to people sometimes when we just don't know what to do when we're confused. And when you don't have that, then that's the open door for a lot of times to mistakes to be made. Um, overall, I hope you guys did like this video. If you did like this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button to let YouTube know that you did like it. And of course, if you like to see more movie reviews, I always upload them on Mondays. By all means, just hit that subscribe button because I'm always uploading them on Mondays and they always are usually providing inspirational messages and real perspectives like this. Uh, so until next time, capture life and create visions.